Today's art project are amazing mountain landscapes inspired by an artist named Jen Aranyi. We'll be drawing mountains, a little bit of a landscape. I'll show you a cool way to shade your mountains using pen or Sharpie or colored pencil. And then you can add color using paint or coloring tools. This is Jen Aranyi. She's an illustrator whose art inspired this project. What do you notice about her style? She often draws very small with brightly colored skies and black and white mountains and snow. We'll be trying a drawing in her style today. For materials, you need a pencil, something black to trace with. It could be a pen, Sharpie, or black colored pencil, and either paint or coloring tools. Real quick though, let's review some vocabulary. This is a landscape. A landscape is a place. It's gone, oh no, let's bring it back. The first thing we need is our background. Can you please say background? Nice, that's the parts that's furthest away. Next we've got the middle ground. Please say middle ground. You got it, it's the stuff that's closer but not super in your face like these trees. And in the front is your foreground. Please say foreground. In this case, trees, grass. The last part of the landscape is the horizon line. Can you please say horizon line? That's the place where the sun sets. It's where the sky ends and the land begins. Now we're gonna start our own landscape. Just grab a pencil and I actually folded my paper in half because these are more fun to do when they're a little smaller. You can even do a bunch of them. Maybe mine will be a card for a friend. So our first job is we're going to create some mountains. First of all, do not just make pointy triangles. These aren't going to look very realistic. Instead, start about maybe halfway down your paper and try making some kind of rough, jaggedy triangles. So see how my line is a little wiggly, wavery? They're not all the same height. Maybe one of them is smaller. And I think three, maybe I'll throw in a little baby one on the side. So those are my mountains. The next thing I'm gonna draw is gonna be the land. So I'm gonna make one line that goes horizontally across my paper, and it's a little curved. Now I'm gonna make another line that goes back. I think that's gonna be it for me, for my landscape. I'm gonna keep it super simple. You can keep making more lines if you want to. The next thing I'm going to do is give every mountain a shadow. Here's what I mean. I'm gonna start at the highest peak. So each mountain has sort of a highest spot. I'm gonna make a wavery, wiggly line that goes down and then kind of go back up towards the side. Same thing, I'm gonna make a wiggly line that goes down, maybe even add another bump. And then go back up until I reach this little triangle. And this might take a little bit of exploration. Like if it looks wrong, like I think this should go lower, right? I'm gonna try to make it go lower and then go back up. See how that looks like you've got two different sides of the mountain now? It's pretty nice. So that's step one. We've got mountains and we've got land. Step two is to add some trees. We're gonna add a couple trees that are really far away, almost at the horizon. So I'm drawing a few little lines. That's the middle ground of the picture. Uh, maybe closer up, I'm gonna have a couple bigger trees. Maybe I'll just do like one, two. We'll see how that looks. Now I think it's time to switch to pen. So if all you have at home are colored pencils, you can use a black colored pencil. Just make sure it is as sharp as you can make it. If all you have at home are um, pens, you can use a pen. Or in class, we're going to probably try to use these Sharpies. I'm going to start by just tracing the pencil lines I've got. If you don't peek here. On the shadowy parts of the mountain, she uses a tiny pen to do something called hatching. Hatching is a shading technique. Basically, you go like this and make lots of little lines. 
If you make them too close to each other, it'll look black. If you make them too far away from each other, it'll look like stripes. So it's a little tricky to get it right, but let's just give it a shot. And I'm actually gonna switch because this Sharpie is running out of juice. So I'm gonna make these just short diagonal lines. And I'm sort of wishing I'd used even like a skinnier Sharpie or pen, but that's okay. We will make it work. Let me, I'm actually gonna add a couple of too. Oh, that's okay. Next, let's trace the land and add the trees. If the tree is really small and far away, I'm gonna pretend it's a pine tree. So I'm just adding some leafage, I'm adding the ones on the top are very small. And I'm just going straight across. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could kind of make them go up and down first. You can practice with pencil first if you want. But I'm starting with just some lines. They're gonna get thicker as they go down. But again, very imperfect because nature is usually not perfectly symmetrical or anything. And maybe I'll just add a little more bulk to the middle. There we go. All right, I really like that. I think that looks super. If you want, you could add something else like a, you could add a river or something. That's something she does. She adds rocks sometimes. She adds little um, tents and, and buildings. In the foreground, you could draw an Arctic fox, a abominable snowman. Make this fun for yourself. So I'm ready for the sky. And I actually, I wanna do something before I paint. I'm gonna just take my pencil and make a little border. I'm trying to stay parallel, or, you know, very close to the edge of my paper. Now as for the sky, it's totally up to you. Again, this is crayon and colored pencil. And here is a video that Jen actually made for students using just the marker and water technique that I've told you about a little bit. It's gotta be washable markers. And you can see she's doing it backwards. She's doing the paint first, then she's gonna let it dry and do the pen. We're gonna do the mountains first because we're trying to get this done all in one sitting. The other thing that Jen uses that most of us don't have is this awesome white paint marker. So I'm gonna show you a different trick using paint and kitchen salt. So if you wanna try this, I recommend what's called a wet on wet painting technique. You grab your water and a paintbrush and you start painting the whole sky. Make sure you go around your mountains carefully. Then grab your paint, and this works with watercolor paint. It does not work with acrylic, if that's what you have at home. And you start spreading that paint out. Allow the colors to blend. I think cool colors look really good together, like purple and blue and green, or purple, blue, and red. Let them mix, and then before it dries, sprinkle a little bit of salt on top. Do not mess with it after that. Just let it sit. Now, can you already see little white circles forming around the salt? That means the salt is absorbing the paint. And hopefully it's gonna create really cool patterns. So I'm gonna keep going on this side. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more here. And now we wait. Okay, she's almost dry. Let's take a look and wow, look at all the patterns created with the salt. It kind of looks like a galaxy, doesn't it? Again, you can use a silver Sharpie or something if you don't have salt. And the last thing I'm gonna do is take my Sharpie when it's totally dry and trace the pencil border that I made. I forgot to trace it. Make sure to write your name at the bottom and you are done. You can create several of these. I find they're really soothing and fun to make.